Welcome to another edition of Chewing the Fat. This is episode number seven. Number seven. I'm Krusty. He's almost. Welcome. Welcome. We are uh, flavoring or flavoring? Drinking some Coors Light. So admittedly, he chooses the beer. I'm at his studio. This is his beer. I will be bringing another beer next episode. So bear with me. Leave comments questions down into the common area about his beer selection so this is our third attempt at shooting this podcast because we're trying to bring in a guest and have some live video so i may be uh struggling a little bit because i keep on opening up a new beer every time we try to do this yep and i'm a lightweight <laughs> so, so our first guest it's, it, it's actually our first, second, and third guest. At this point. <laughs> is the one, the only Miyagi on the trail. Yes, welcome, Welcome Miyagi. back. Yeah, welcome back once again. Gentlemen, <laughs> gentlemen. Hey, it's it's like we've done this before. Wow. Once or twice. Once, uh, once but or cheers twice. to you for hanging in there and, and putting up with uh, with our... There you go. What, what, are you, what are you drinking there, Mr. Miyagi? Well, I'm paying homage to you fellows up there in the Twin Cities. This is the Gypsy Outpost. It's an imperial pastry stout from St. Paul. I'm also paying homage to my to my boy Milos and the and the Gypsy here. This is uh, this twelve point five percent. I don't think this is in the same league as that Coors Light you got there. Oh, that's bro, twelve point five, and these are just over three. Yeah, that's, a little, that's <laughs> let's brutal. be let's be clear. Miyagi hasn't drank three of those yet. Uh, no, but that one beer would floor you, sir. Yeah. So, pretty much. I like. To so, I, I'd like to point out that Miss. Yeah. Cheers, Mister Wisconsin uh, buys a, and drinks a Minnesota beer. Mm -hmm. it's, is it better than Spotted Cow? Spotted Cow. Yeah. Naglaris is a real popular brewery. Absolutely. We got a lot of them. But but is it? I gotta say, Minnesota is the beer that you're drinking better. This is good. This is good. It's gotta be good. It's got a tenth on it. Come on. It's got. Uh, it's got a campfire, it's got a tent, it's got a starry sky, backpackers, come on. It's a good beer. It's different. That's a porter, you know, and, and you know, Spotted Cow is what, a lager or an ale? No, it's a lager. It, it, it is still it's speaking a corn English. Cream I don't know ale. what any of that is. It's a corn cream, a completely different. Yeah. Completely different. It's good. How, good okay. Common knowledge. Good stuff. Unlike, unlike the Shill Brothers, we're not going to talk about beer and brandy and whiskey our whole podcast here. So, um, Tell us a little bit about, well, let's, let's tell them a little bit about Miyagi first. Miyagi on the trail. We've camped a few times with him. Uh, he's real obnoxious, just like us, so we, we get to get along well. Um, and uh, he's speaking of obnoxious, he's got a buddy named Milos that you were just talking about. And Milos comes from Gypsy Camp. Tell us a little bit more about Milos. Milos from the Gypsy Camp. Yeah, so... Uh... <clears throat> In 2018, I was attempting the uh, the uh, FKT on the SHD, the Spear Hiking Trail, and I wasn't more than about an hour into my trip, and I'm coming down the hill, and there's this guy with his blue mohawk sitting on the side of the trail there, and he looked distressed, and you know, I asked him if he was doing okay. And this is all in my video; you can check it out. And uh, he says, "Yeah, you know, I'm just resting," and he says, "I think I'll hike with you for a while." I'm like, "Well, I'm going to be going kind of fast here, so <laughs> you know." And, well. Well, son of a gun, if the guy didn't keep up with me the entire time, um, and uh, he just kind of hung with me, it was it was a really interesting conversation. I asked him about this blue mohawk, and he says, well, in my village where I came from, and he's never told any of us exactly where it comes from, but in the village, the blue mohawk is a symbol for danger. It's a, he's a dangerous person. So, yeah, it was, uh, was kind of interesting. But I'll tell you what, Milos is the kind of guy... Uh, that pretty much anybody would hit it off with. The, the guy will take his shirt off his back for you. He he hikes with literally, him, literally. And I mean, most of the time he's hiking without a shirt on. Uh, over the last few years, we've we've gotten a chance to do some really deep winter camping. You know, negative fifteen, twenty, and the guy's running around in in shorts. It's he's crazy, but he's a good time. He's 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 a great time. He'll do anything for you. So. So, so I watched uh, Miyagi's videos with Milos in them, and we went camping with Miyagi, and I'm like, come on, Milos isn't real, this is all staged, it's just a character. 
So we're camping and Miyagi says, all right, let's FaceTime Milos. <laughs> Milos is like outside of a cabin, shirtless, giving himself a haircut. It, uh, in a, in a and, bath with a watering can, with, with a, like an yep, old, old water can. It's like can. a flower can, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sh shaving his head. For, for, because he's not allowed in the yeah, house. Yeah, he's not allowed in the house. <laughs> and he brings out like a can from like 1970 of PBR. Right, and like, it's full. <laughs> which he's saving for marriage, so, for, for the right woman. Correct, yeah, correct, yeah. correct. <laughs> correct. <laughs> Oh, uh, so Milos is a good sign. Uh, Milos is featured in a few of Miyagi, Miyagi's videos. He does have a YouTube channel, very good trip videos, high quality edits. He also has an Instagram account. So check out Miyagi description to his channel, to his Instagram down in the description of this video. Hop over there, have a look, have a like, and be sure to subscribe and follow as well. Absolutely. Don't, don't forget but today. Jeremy, uh, before we go forward, don't forget you did that new series, Milos on the Edge. He was I, I tell you what, that made his day. He, he was just glowing after that. Milo he was in real oh, yeah. form. He, he had a PG it down a little bit, oh, though. Yeah. He had a, oh, yeah. yeah. That that <laughs> video was highly edited. <laughs> as, as is um, most of the video that I take of Milo. I can only put about 20% of what I actually take of this guy because it's just, oh, it, he's a good time. It, it's all safe fun, but, you know, we, we really do have a good time out on the trail. Cool. So today we're going to talk about gear and the first person I thought of when I'm thinking about gear is Mr. Miyagi and um, he makes gear, he owns a bunch of gear and we're going to talk about backpacks. Miyagi is super ultra lightweight. What do you got there? Oh, just a little hammock we made. Just a little one. No, no, no. no. Let's get back to this. What, what is that? Well, what did you call that thing that you hang from in a tree? Well, well, Jeremy, this is called a hammock. A hammock. hammock. Not a hammock. It's no, a hammock. It's a hammock, it's, it's a hammock yeah. In, in the Midwest, we call these hammocks. Or at least in Wisconsin. We oh, jeez. I, I don't, yeah. Don't you know, this is a hammock. Ofta. Yeah, yadder oh, oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. You hang between the trees, you know, with this here. How much does that hammock weigh there? This is uh, 8.67 uh, ounces. Little, oh geez, this little guy here. Wait, wait. Yeah. And you should know that not only is Miyagi a gearhead, but he makes a lot of his own gear: tarps, ring flies, hammocks, and I think didn't you make some Dyneema shorts? Yeah, yeah, well? underpants. Yeah, you had re underpants? yeah, you had requested those. Uh yes, extra small. Okay. Four, four, <laughs> so, as a guy who sweats a lot, Dyneema underpants. Yeah. That doesn't sound like a good idea. It's to a me. hybrid. It's a, it's the new hybrid. They they bonded with you know depends. It's yeah. <laughs> but you know Rob's trick for keeping the groinal area dry, right? No underwear. So Rob did a video. Oh, oh, uh, no. So Rob did a video once, and yeah, I, I he says if you leave your zipper open. I hike with my zipper down. If I'm wearing pants, uh, I'm calling BS because I, I think I down. think he discovered halfway through his video that he was walking with his zipper down. So he said, "Oh, if you're hiking with pants and it turns into a warm day, hike with your zipper so down. It's amazing." Check out Rob's Instagram. He just did a, a post near the High Falls at Teddy Gooch State Park, and he was hiking with three ladies. Were you using that technique? We call that trolling. There's a term for these. We things. call that pink blazing. <laughs> it's pink blazing. <laughs> <laughs> there, but, there, there is that. Yes. But the girls, the, the ladies that Rob was backpacking with, were all over six feet tall, so they probably couldn't see his zipper level anyway. Doesn't matter. So. It doesn't matter. All right, we're going to talk about backpacks. Yes. So we're going to talk about our own personal evolution. Some of us have evolved more than others. Uh, kind of the backpacks that we started with, where we're at now, where we're going, and we'll see. Uh, we have a couple other things we want to talk about, but we'll see if we get to it. Yeah. So, being our guest, Miyagi, what's the first backpack that got you into backpacking, and why? What do you got? All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna age myself here a little bit. So back in the in the mid to late '90s, I was in college, and I took a few classes in backpacking and outdoor rec and things. And 
of course, I had to go buy my own gear. And, and back then, we didn't have the ultralight stuff that we do now. So my, my first pet, hang on one second. This might take up the entire frame here. Look at that thing. <laughs> I don't That's think, as big as you. Oh, yeah. I don't even think you can see the top of this. This is, uh, this is called the North Face Bad Lights. This is a 75-liter pack uh, made out of Cordura. I mean, there's there's straps for days on this thing. This Look at all those loops. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like, oh, you could, you could hang everything off of this thing. But this pack alone weighs 7 pounds. Now, to give you an idea... Wow. Some of the, the packs I'm going to show you at the end, my entire base weight is is seven pounds. So just just this pack alone is, is seven pounds. I mean this, in fact, it's no. so tall. This thing is so tall, and and I'm I'm kind of like Rob. I'm, I'm a little vertically challenged. So this uh, it actually has a headrest right here. It, it's an indentation where your head goes, and. Uh, I, I still have hair on my head, not like these guys, but yeah, I got a I got a bald spot back here where it kind of got <laughs> rubbed away. But uh, I was gonna say that thing must just super cool. beefy on this thing. And this this is the first pack that I took uh, on 2015 when Trips and I, my better half. So if you see any of my videos, uh, Trips and I, uh, we're we're doing all kinds of trips together. But our first time backpacking together was on the Appalachian Trail, and uh, this was 2015. This is when Darwin got his start on the trail. And um, he's probably wearing the same pack, right? He he was actually. Maybe. We, hiked to, we hiked together for a while, and, and we were comparing gear. And uh, I, I actually got him started in, in YouTube back in the day. Not a lot of people know that. Oh, but, you're darned. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Small world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this this was it. This right. was this was my first uh, my first. But it doesn't even fit the frame. It's so big. So. But you could still put gear in that pack and go backpacking right now, though. You can go mountaineering in that pack right now. Oh, yeah. You could fit a small child in this thing. It could fit. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to ask how you know that. Yeah. Actually, yeah, my, my daughter, she's in, she's coming with us on this trip here in the, in the next couple of days. She's actually hiding in here right now. So, yeah. That's how big it is. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Okay. For probably the first time ever, Get my... First backpack was lighter than Miyagi. That's probably the only time I'm ever oh, wow. going to be lighter than Miyagi. Wow, okay. Because mine was super, super ultra lightweight. Oh, yes. Oh. Yes, this made an appearance in a previous Chewing the Fat episode. So On the gear we regretted taking with us. But it wasn't this pack. This is it, was, nice was, pack. it was in the pack, that's right. Yeah, so this is a Kelty. I don't know how many liters it is. It's probably about 70 liters. It's huge. My wife bought this and a sleeping bag at a garage sale for like 20 bucks. So this made it through one or two hikes. This thing weighs almost six pounds. So, and I did make an alteration. Even when I was first backpacking, I made some modifications. So this backpack doesn't have any uh, pockets on the hip belt. So I sewed a fanny pack, which I know you're a fan of fanny packs. Yeah, I like fanny packs. On to have a pocket to put my camera in. That's legit. So that's a legit mod. Hey, I got some. Look at you. You're you're, some you're sewing before I was. Look at that. Look at that. Wow. Actually, my wife sewed it at that time. Mm. No. So she... my first pack that got me into backpacking is a Kelty Red Wing 50. Look at all those patches. Yeah, I was looking, look at those patches. I mean. Look at all those patches. I, I've taken this this backpack around the world. Um, I was gearing up for a backpacking trip in Nepal. I ended up staying three months there, and I lived out of this backpack, essentially. I just went to REI, saw a cool-looking pack, and just bought it. I realized that I didn't have its size to fit me, so it's a little big, and I didn't know that shoulder pain and discomfort was abnormal. That's just how it was. But this pack is an excellent pack. It's a great entry level backpack. It doesn't cost that much and it probably weighs three and a half pounds. This is a 50 liter. But how, how long ago was that? This was 2015, 2014. Okay. So okay. Miyagi and ours and mine were a little earlier, yep. more vintage than yours. Cause yes. I'm impressed that your first pack was only 50 liters. Yep. And I fit everything in here and, and it worked out just fine. 
I, I, I probably would still use it if it fit me. Once I found a pack that fit me, it, it's, it changed. So, you, changed so are you saying you, you outgrew it, Rob, or? No. Well, Remember that vertically challenged oh, thing we got yeah, going? Yeah. It's just too tall oh. for me. So uh, I could sell this pack. It is 100% functional. Anyone, you know, a little bit taller than me would do well to have this pack. But it's got a lot of memories, so I'm, I'm, I'm very reluctant to give it up. I was impressed. On the side here, it has an O positive. So if I fell off a mountain and I needed a blood transfusion, we can see that on my pack, on my dead riding. That's good to know. It's good to know. Yeah. Mental note, if I ever borrow your pack, I should probably put some tape over that. Yep. Yep. Unless you're O-Pause. Yeah. Yep. That's it. First pack. All right. Uh... Go ahead, Miyagi. I know you've got like ten backpacks, right? Yeah, we, got, we got a few. We got a few. Let's see here. Let's dig in the let's dig in the file here. All right. So number two, we uh, we're we're starting to delve here, not into the ultralight world, but it's certainly a step towards that. This is the Osprey Exos Fifty Eight, and uh, man, this this was my first. This is my first backpack where I did some long miles. Uh, Trips and I did, uh, I don't know, around a 200 mile section of the Appalachian Trail through Virginia. And I was seeing a lot of through hikers with this thing. This is great. It still has the frame. So you have the aluminum frame that goes through, mm -hmm. uh, but it has uh, an air suspension system. So it actually lifts off the back and it allows the, the uh, mesh material here to vent. Uh, a lot of us, as we're, we're doing big miles, you're sweating, you know, hot day, you're sweating. This gives you that airflow behind there. So that was a real winner. Um, obviously, we went from a 75 liter backpack down to a 58. Um, that make it, made a big difference. Um, it's a lighter weight uh, nylon material. Still has the, the water bottle pockets. You could fit two uh, liter water bottles on both sides. Um, it's got the adjustments uh, in the shoulder area there. It's got some small shoulder pockets, some hip belt pockets uh, down here, and of course, like Rob's back, of course, when we all start out, we got to put stickers and patches and things all over there. So I got my Appalachian Trail patch on there. Yep. Now, this backpack does have a brain that comes with it, but uh, I did take that off, saved a few grams here and there. And uh, I got rid of some of the strapping on the bottom side. So I pared it down, and, you know, this thing comes in, I think brand new, it's around 200 around 200 $210, and it's about two and a half pounds. So it was really a, a huge step forward for me back in you know, 2016, 2017, moving more towards an, an ultra-light backpack. Mm -hmm. So I use this uh, on the AT, use it up at Pictured Rocks, got a, got a lot of use out of this, and now I kind of hold on to it for other people. It's nostalgic, kind of like Rob's backpack. I don't want to get rid of it. It's a nice-looking you know, backpack still. Yep. You, you love these that, things. That backpack is still used widely to this day. It's a great, lighter-weight, mass-produced, non-cottage vendor backpack that's a lot of people still love that backpack. Yeah. What I, yeah, you what can I find, find interesting that about that, yep. yeah, right now, yep. What I find yep. interesting about that is you could take the brain off, but there's still a flap to cover over the top. Yep. Because I know if I took the brain off, you know, you just have that cinch at the top, mm -hmm. and there's nothing covering. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. So that was nice. that was number two. Yep. Your awesome. number two. My number two. My number two is the direct competitor to the Osprey Exos. And it's made by Gregory, and it's the Gregory Optic series. The Optic comes in a 48, which is this 48 liter. They also make a 58 liter, the same size as that Osprey he has. Uh, essentially, the same backpack. Comes in, uh, I, I, I think, a little bit later, right out of the gate. It has hip belt pockets, which the Exos doesn't. But you still got the big, meshy pocket in front, which I've grown to love these big pockets. Because you can stuff rain gear, tarps, any quick ex accessible items. Um, this also comes with a, bra a removable brain, uh, uh, uh. but they also give you, uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh. <laughs> they also give you a light brain, uh, a lightweight flap to put over the top. But this backpack, to this day, is the most comfortable backpack I own. Um, but at 48 liters, especially in the winter time, um, I it gets too full. Yeah, I have to go with something a little bit bigger. But this is a fantastic backpack. It's got the uh, the suspension as well, just like the Exos, to get the circulation, the ventilation on your back. So between this and the Exos, that's a great option if you're looking for um, a feature-rich, budget-friendly entry to the lighter weight category in backpacks. Um, but yeah, awesome, awesome bag. And right. while you're out on the trail, 
<laughs> have I mentioned that I have a YouTube channel? Here's my card. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, I can't I have one of those. Cards. <laughs> Do you? I, I've seen Rob. I've seen Rob hand that card out to no less than three or four people on trail. And and show them what I do every time he does that. I'm just sitting over there going. Yeah, yeah, it's that's. The I face film face. a lot, yeah. and people are like, "Oh, well, what are you filming?" And I said, "Oh, I'm filming for a YouTube channel." Oh, what's your channel name? Kaboom! I'm so glad you asked. I like it. I like it. That's I think right. it's a great idea. So, so I have a question on this pack, Rob. Yeah. So you said it's a 48 liter, and yep. what's really interesting is if you are shopping for packs, mm -hmm. you know, just that label of. It's a 48 liter, it's a 60 liter, it's a 30 liter is deceiving because, you know, how much of that 48 is the inside main compartment? The mass produced packs label their capacities as main compartment only. Everything on the exterior is extra. Cottage vendors don't do that. Oh. Cottage vendors include everything. Yeah. So now you know. Because, you know, I'm shopping around now and it's very deceiving because I've seen some other packs that advertise that they're smaller leaders, but you look at them and it's like, it doesn't look that way. So, uh, all right, my number two. I'm gonna give you my number two and my number three. Oh. This was the first backpack for backpacking that I actually purchased. So that Kelty was hurting my back. I went to REI and I tried out some backpacks and. The guy at REI said, you don't want an REI brand. They're crap. <laughs> and he told me, well, why don't you try on this Deuter? So this is a Deuter 65 plus 10. So it's still a 75 liter. But man, this thing is comfortable. And I still wear this in the winter when I'm just going short distances and uh, have bigger gear. But uh, when they say 65 plus 10, why don't they just say 75 liter? This little gray part, you can uh, you can compact and not use that. This is the 10, and this is the 65. So, uh, like I said, it, they have a lot more padding in their shoulder straps, so you can carry more weight, and uh, it's super comfortable. But it's 75 liters, so as I evolved, I wanted a smaller pack. So what did I buy? Ah. Being risk adverse like i am risk adverse i bought the exact same pack but this is the deuter act like 40 plus 10. Oh, so this is 40 liters down below plus 10 up above so uh again the the bigger cushion on the straps and uh yeah it's a great pack i haven't worn this pack in a long time but i just borrowed to someone and they wore it nice the one thing i will say for packs if you're shopping for packs right now make sure you get fitted. Make sure the pack fits you. It, it's a night and day difference between an ill-fitting and a well-fitting pack. And when you're getting fitted, put like 30 pounds of weight in the backpack. Yep. And walk around. Walk around the store for like 20 minutes. Yep. And they'll let you do that. I mean, if you sure. go to REI, they have big bean bags. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna spend 200 bucks plus on a backpack, yeah, wear that thing around for sure. What else do you have, Miyagi? Ooh, all right. Let's see. All right. So now we are going to delve into the world of Dyneema. Oh, Dyneema. And Cuban fiber. The old Cuban fiber, yep. So this is uh, this is from Z-Pax, a little cottage company down in Florida. This is the Arc Blast. So what's nice about this is obviously the Dyneema is a very lightweight material, uh, but it has... Uh, it still has a frame. It has carbon stays, so it gives it a, a bit of support. And if you engage these carbon stays, similar to the Exos, it's going to give you that area between your back and the mesh, which is going to allow it to breathe. So this is a, uh, what is this is a 55 liter pack, 55 liter. Really? That's 55. So, okay. Yeah. But that that includes all the. Yeah, bodies. yeah. The inside of that is uh, 40 liters, and they count that Correct. huge mesh pouch. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So on the on the front of this, what I like to do is I like to put my my hammock and my rain fly on the outside here. Um, I've been caught in some pretty serious weather, and it's real nice to get your rain fly up first. So if that's not buried inside of my pack, I can pull it right out on the backside. So 
this has the, the mesh on the front side. It's got the side pockets with the uh, Dyneema uh, compression system here. They can fit a couple of uh, one liter water bottles. The nice thing about the Arctic Blast is they have a lot of options for accessories. So you can get yourself some, some hip belt pockets. You can get shoulder strap pockets. There's all, all, all kinds of things that if you go to the z pack site, you can accessorize this thing with. So, and of course, all you those are add-ons. You get a fanny pack, absolutely. You can put that, yes. you mount that. The z packs actually has a, a chest pack, which I've used for quite some time. When I was attempting my FKT on the SHT, um, I like to have the, the chest pack right there, and I would fill that with my lunch and my snacks for the day, and that's that's how I would, would keep moving on the trail. I wouldn't have to stop mm -hmm. for, for food. So that was kind of nice, and, and of course, this thing doesn't weigh a whole lot. This is 20 ounces, so... Um, very lightweight. My my first real real step into the to the ultralight world. Now I've kind of relegated this to uh, my winter backpacking. Of course, being from Minnesota and Wisconsin here, our winters get brutal, and we have to pack extra layers. You know, when it gets down to negative 15, 20, and so we're wearing not only this but but pulk sleds. So the extra capacity of this uh, and it being lightweight allows me to bring those extra extra things. But we'll start getting for my packs anyway. They start getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is the last of my big, big packs. So. Yeah, and I imagine you'd have a lot of room in there if you have your tarp and your hammock on the outside. On the outside, it leaves more room on the inside. Absolutely. But you do that and a pulk, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. On the deep winter trips, probably, probably like you guys, we're we're not doing a ton of miles. I mean, when we're post holing through, you know, two to three foot of snow. You know, you're you're not you're not doing a 20 mile day. I mean, if you're getting five miles in, you're you're having a really good day. I mean, and that's pushing it. So, I mean, really, in, in, in the deep winter, comfort is a factor. So, we're bringing saws. We're we're bringing all kinds of stuff up there. Yeah, as you guys know. So, yep. so, so on that Z Packs pack, it has the fiberglass arc, and you use your pack in the winter. And it's carbon, carbon, carbon fiber. Yeah, yeah carbon fiber and. You know, I've been worried, I also have a Z-Pax, uh, of using that in the winter because I'm afraid of bending that carbon fiber. Do you have any worries about that? Yeah, so when I'm packing that down, I don't engage those those carbon fiber stays at all. Like you, I'm, I'm concerned that anything plastic carbon fiber, obviously the, the durability of it goes down when you're talking about zero past into the negative temperatures. And yeah, I don't engage the stays, I just wear it. And, and quite frankly, you know, we're wearing extra layers. It's not like you just have a T-shirt mm -hmm. on, you know. So I, I don't need that extra. It's more padding. Yeah, I don't need that extra. So I don't engage the stays. I just use it for the lightweight, and I use it because it's 55 liters, and I can do what I need with it. And I would imagine that gives you more room, not curving it yeah, as well. Exactly. Oh, yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. What's your next yeah. one? My next one. So with the 48-liter Gregory that I have, I found myself in the winter time or longer trips. I'd run out of room pretty readily. So I was looking to get a bigger pack and I almost got the 58 liter version of the optic. But in my research, ULA, ooh, wow, ULA kept popping up. And ULA is a company out of Utah that make custom packs. Nice brand, yep. They're fan, oh, they're, they're yep. great. Great yep. company, great guys. Um, this is a 65 liter pack and I had this custom made. I picked out all the colors. I picked out, I mean, just about everything on this pack. But again, the big, large, generous, meshy pouch in the front. Hey, Rob. I heard that that thing carries rocks really well as well. <laughs> yes, it does. Big rocks in Ziploc yeah. bags, as a matter yeah, of fact. Yeah. <laughs> if you go hiking with Miyagi, you might find a 15-pound rock in your Surprise. <laughs> Had my name embroidered on it, but I picked out the colors. I mean, this pack carries really well, especially for the bigger loads, because in the wintertime, you're carrying heavier top quilts, heavier under quilts, things like that, extra layers. Um, it's not the most comfortable pack. That still goes to my Gregory 48, but it does carry really, really well. So on longer trips, winter, this is my go-to. And if you want information on the ULA circuit and you want to custom order it just like mine, Leave a comment down in the common area. I could put you in touch with the rep that I talked to. No, uh, I don't get any kickback. But, but talk about that because this customization wasn't directly from ULA. No, 
It was from a, I don't know if he's a rep for ULA, but he can get options on packs that ULA themselves aren't, that they're just not available. So through this guy, he, he's able to, to do some things for you. But the pack... Rob's got a guy. Yeah, I got a guy. This so, pack so weighs the same amount that, as my does that Gregory. the colors, Rob's? If I yes, contact yes. ULA? I, yep, uh, no contact this guy. So the guy and, will arrange the color options. The guy, he'll, he'll, you could do anything you okay. want. This is X pack material, which is waterproof in and of itself. I seam sealed the seams on the inside, so this pack is fairly waterproof. I mean, it's not going to submerge or anything, but this is a fantastic pack. Cost a couple bucks because I had it custom made, but um, I don't regret buying it. Um, this is a great, great option if you're looking for customization. What do I have in here? Business cards? Oh, no, no business Probably cards. Probably rock. You know what those are? Yeah, they're for the end of your trekking poles. Why does anybody ever use these? Unless you're a 70 year old guy walking out a bike path. Exactly. The ULA circuit. They have a bunch of different packs, but this is their circuit. This one's mine. How many you got left there, Miyagi? Uh, I don't know, three, ten, ten maybe? All right, go for yeah. it. I see you're wearing a Hilltop Pax t shirt. Are any of your packs Hilltop Well, packs? we're working on something. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Ooh. So this is my my first step into the ultralight world. This is from a company called Palante. So this is the the V2, the V2. V2. And, and like like Rob, I like my customization. So I got the yes, the I Miyagi with the, <laughs> with the Lotus. So on the back, of course, it's got the uh, the Dyneema mesh material here, which is where I put my my hammock and my tarp. Uh, of course. A um, little pro tip for you. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I have a small pro, pro, tip. pro tip. A little safety pin on there. Douche. So in, in a lot of the trips I do, especially on the SHT, which you guys are familiar with, it's a wet trail, right? So if you're mm -hmm. swapping between your socks, I like to wring mine out in whatever stream I'm in, yep. and then you just pin them to the back of your pack, and they flop around and dry out. So a lot of my packs, you'll see these little pins hanging off the side. But. So... Pro, pro tip. tip. Pro tip. So, like the Arc Blast, this is a Dyneema material, and it's got enough room in the side pockets for two liter water bottles. It does not have a hip belt. This is a hip beltless pack. Um, it's a frameless pack. It's frameless, well. yeah. It's a frameless pack. So, it comes in a, a, a couple different sizes. This is the 16 inch, which is a 31 liter pack. Um, the only downside of these, especially with the V2, is they don't come with a lot of padding. Um, like the Baltero, I believe that you have, and the, the Osprey Exos that I have, the real bulky, uh, you know, uh, shoulder straps. This does not have it. These are very thin. So, But you're not going to be carrying 30 plus pounds. But I do. But I do. Really? Absolutely. So this particular pack I took on my 2018 attempt of the SHT, the FKT. So I, I have, in this small pack, I put eight days worth of food in this thing. So That's crazy. So, yeah. So what what what's the weight capacity of that pack supposed to be, and what do you carry? I think when I started, I had 30 pounds in here, and they're recommending, I think, no more than about 20 to 25, somewhere in there. I mean, doesn't that get uncomfortable? Why do you do that? Well, you got to remember, each day you're consuming eh, about a pound and a half to two pounds of food. So, sure. you know, after a few days, I get down to the to the optimal. Uh, weight uh, that this pack can carry, and I'm, I'm pushing it. And that's just me personally. I don't. I obviously don't recommend it. But the nice thing about it is this thing is super lightweight. You know, one of the other features that I really about, like about the uh, Palante packs is now I flip this thing upside down. Is the it's called butt pack or the? Uh, oh, yep. I like that. So it's a it's a stretch uh, stretch polyester material. It's flipped on the lid, so anything that you put in here, it doesn't want to slide out. And then it's got a small little thumb hole on the opposite side. And the way they designed this was to put your food as you travel, you know, your snacks during the day, maybe your lunch, you load up the bottom half, and as you eat your wrappers, you eat your snacks, you put the wrappers through this little thumb hole here. That's very So cool. the wrappers accumulate on this side, and you're pulling out the fresh food on this side. So kind of a neat, uh, neat thing. For me, I put my rain gear in here. I have a, an outdoor research helium two jacket, along with the Snow Peak umbrella, and a Z-Pax rain skirt. I slide all that stuff right down in here. It's a nice stretchy material, as you can see. So you get a lot of stuff down in here. I've never lost anything out of the back side or out of the bottom side here. But that's where I put my rain gear. 
Um, up where we live by the Spirit Hiking Trail, the North Country Trail, the SH Trail, we get a lot of rain, real damp and wet, so the rain gear is coming out quite a bit. So I keep that at the bottom. That's, nice. That's yeah. a great feature. So this is my first step. This this is my ultra light backpack for my bigger trips, my say five plus day trips. But unfortunately, Palante is a very difficult pack to get. Uh, you get a, you get put on a waiting list, and you're lucky if if you get one. So. Timing is all it is everything with these packs. Uh, no to have. Yeah. Wow. All right. Go for it, son. Well, I have one pack left, and this is the, I consider this my small pack. And the only reason why I bought it is because I got a I got a hell of, I got like half off on it, right? It's made by Mountain Smith. It's the Zerk Forty. Now this pack is starting to pop up on some YouTube channels out there. And it's a 40 liter pack designed by the Hiking Viking Triple Crowner. He got together with Matt Smith, beard. put together his perfect pack. Big yeah, beard. big beard, big broad Every guy. Beard. Just Hell of a hiker. Yeah. Not unlike yourself, Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> uh, but again, big meshy pouch, you know, in the back here so you can stuff all your wet things, easy accessible items. Uh, double water pocket, water bottle pouches. Big one here and another one in front. And that same concept carries through to the shoulder straps where they give you a water bottle pocket and an accessory pocket in front as well. Frameless, you know, it bends. Very good padding on the straps. The inside is just one big, one big cavern. There's not, there's no organization in here. And are most a roll ultra lightweight packs that way now though? Uh, yeah, a lot of packs are going that way. Um, I do wish that it had a small secured pocket inside somehow, like some sort of small zippered something. Keys. So yep. I could, yeah, keys, wallet, cash. Yep. You know, you, you know, can order one from Z-Pack. So you um, can otherwise, you just chuck it in the bottom, and then you fish it out if you get into town or something. But um, it doesn't fit me great. Um, it just seems to be just a little, just a little big. Uh, once I put the sternum strap on, it seems to fit and, and hug a little bit better. But um, not a giant fan of the pack. I may end up selling it. It does come with a hip belt. So if you're going to put anything heavy, you can utilize this, but it's removable as yeah. well. But uh, this pack, I mean, if you're putting more than 20, 25 pounds in it, um, it's probably going to start getting comfortable after that. But the Zerk 40, it's, it's only like a pound and a half or something like that, a lightweight pack. Build quality is excellent. I just don't feel that it fits me. What's the material, Rob? Is that a, is that a Dyneema or is that a... Uh, no, it's like a, it's like a diamond weave something but it's highly water resistant i just took this out on a trip we hiked 11 miles um on the one day and it rained all day and everything inside my pack stayed dry i didn't have a pack liner or anything um so yeah. is that a roll top okay. yep roll top okay. in uh, it uh, you can either clip it together up top here or you can roll it down and sit you down with the with the side nice. straps here but the, the pack is it's got a lot of features the build quality like i said is excellent um, but um, just doesn't fit the grades for me. For me, so. Looks like we got a Shill Brothers uh, backpack coming up next here. Sh Ooh, the Shill the, sh what? the Shill Ooh. Brothers is it? Our, Never no. heard of them. I thought maybe you guys no. had the Shill Brothers there with you. No. Hmm. Twins or? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I I just I All see right. the Doritos on the top. Oh, yeah. there it is. Yeah. A, lot, a lot of people watch my videos and kind of copy me. Yeah. So I could see how. I mean, you know, you know, I could see how another channel could rip off the Dorito yeah. idea. Yeah. I get it. Dicks. Copycat SBO. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is a very popular pack. This is my Arc Hall. I've had it for almost two years, um, and interestingly enough, much like your uh, Z Packs pack. Uh, this is the slightly larger version. It's not Dyneema, but it still only weighs two, uh, I think it's 22.6 ounces. So a little over a pound. Uh, I've had it for two years, just love it. You know, the big mesh pouch here on the back is my favorite yeah, feature that's an of excellent this. Feature. Uh, where I put everything that can get wet in there. Uh, Would you say this pocket's kind of like a junk drawer? Yeah, it's, it's my junk bag. drawer. Of anything that you know I've got you know the ground cloth that I put under my hammock I've got a raincoat I've got my rain skirt I've got a saw I've got a little rag the problem is is I'm an idiot and 
I often forget to put my beef jerky in my food bag. So this little hole here is from when I left beef jerky in here overnight and a mouse uh, found it on the Ozark Highland Trail. Yep. But the good part is, is I called ZPAX. This thing has a warranty for two years, still under warranty. If I ship this down to them, they'll replace this pouch for me. Hey, Jeremy. So you know what? On Thursday, yeah. where we're going, they, they have bears. They have they bears. Have, they have bears, yeah. Oh, the bears. The, the oh, bears, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't have problems with bears. It's mice. <laughs> Are you sure? And mold. Are you and sure? mold. I hear you have a problem with mold as well. Mold, mice, and Old bears. Mice and bears. Uh, oh, yeah, there was that one oh, bear. But yeah, the one bear that invaded. There was camp only one. I've had two bear. mice. So I got to tell you guys a quick story. So I was, I was camping up at the Boundary Waters this weekend. And uh, that night I was camping by myself, dispersed camping. And, I, and my worst fear is laying in my hammock and have like a bear come up and nudge me. <laughs> so I had something like hit me in the shoulder and I was like, ah, because I thought it was a bear. And I think it was just my backpack falling over and hitting me. But then about an hour later, I'm laying in my hammock and I feel like some little thing like nudge me on my left butt cheek. I'm like, what? And then like five seconds later, it nudged me on my right butt cheek and a mouse was running between my hammock and my underquilt right oh, across my kidding. ass. Seriously. <laughs> Wow. So then I'm paranoid about the mouse getting my underquilt, so I had to get up and shake it off. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, we uh, digress. So anyway, it's a good pack. I strap on my uh, Doritos. The problem is, is as I've evolved, this is a 62-liter pack. The inside, you know, everything's 62 liters, and I need something a little bit smaller. You know, like the Arc Blast that you have is about the size that I want now. Mm. But I'm looking at the Light AF... Uh, 40 liter with suspension. So that's about the same size as that Arc Blast. Um, Why not the Hilltop Pax Raven 40? Ah! Be because I haven't seen it. Really? You know, I, I'm not. I'm someone that wants to see somebody else's pack and touch it and feel it before I plop $350 ben, for a backpack. Ben, reach ben. out. If you're watching this, ben reach McMillan. out. Ben Reach out. Yeah. And I saw the uh, Light AF pack when we we're in Wisconsin, Chad from UGQ has a light AF yep. and a couple other guys. So they're nice packs. Uh, and I like their mesh on the back was a little bit better than this stuff. So, and this is all packed because Miyagi and I are going backpacking this weekend. A trip that I can't make, unfortunately. Yeah. So you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Uh, all right. Show me what you guys have. We're going to miss What you, do you carry now? All right. I appreciate it, man. So the evolution. Here it is. Joey. This is my baby. Yes, this it is my It looks like Joey. a sleeping bag with straps. Yeah, with straps. So this is 11.8 uh, ounces. Real tiny. There's there's no frames whatsoever. In fact, um, I would consider this a fast pack. So it's it still oh, yeah. has the, the shoulder straps, but they contour really nice to the body. In fact, it, it's almost like someone's coming behind you and just giving you a nice, nice hug. Um, the downside is it's only 28 liters, but if you pare down your gear, especially for kind of the border seasons, late spring, obviously summer, into early fall, um, I can fit uh -oh. everything that I need in here. And, and again, this, this is an ultralight pack. You know, you got to have a base weight really under, I would say under 10 pounds, ideally seven to nine pounds is kind of the sweet spot. Um, and this is what uh, my daughter, who's going to be joining uh, Jeremy and I on Thursday uh, in the Smoky Mountains, this is what she's going to be wearing. And uh, it, it still has all the features of a larger pack. You have the mesh on the backside. You get your G-clip that goes over the top, so there's no brain on this whatsoever. You can still fit a one-liter water bottle on each side. And the really nice got that uh, that bottom pocket. So you can still yeah, fit your yeah. snacks if you want in there. Again, I put my, my rain gear in there, and it's got the thumb hole for the wrappers if you, if you want to do that. What's also nice is it's got the large uh, pockets that you still could fit uh, one of the smaller, like a 750-milliliter smart water bottle up in the top there. It's got an elastic cord. 
The difference here in the sternum strap is, is it's got two straps, one up top and one a little bit uh, down below there. Mm. Like I said, and it that. really hugs your body. Yeah. Um, Trips and I just got back from a trip up to Grand Island, which is kind of up by uh, Pictured Rocks. It's, it's, it's right across the bay from Munising, Michigan. It's a really nice hike. You can do it in two days. But we had a chance to hike that, and, and, and Trips and I traded backpacks. In fact, you guys and I, we were talking about that. Maybe someday we'll, we'll trade backpacks. But we got a, a chance to swap backpacks, and she was just amazed at, one, how well this fit. And you guys know Trips. She's, she's rather well endowed, her woman. And uh, this contour to her body really nice. <laughs> or for a man. Really, or for a man, yeah, yeah. But uh, no, this, this worked really well. Uh, but again, you know, you're, you're rocking base weights, again, between 7 and 10 pounds. You know, I, I wouldn't put anything more than about 15 pounds in this pack. At, at the most, you're really overloading it. But this is what, uh, this is what Addison's going to be wearing when we leave on our trip. Moving to my next one. Because I have another fast pack, and this is from a company called Mass Drop. It's, it's now called Drop, if you're familiar. Uh, this is the Aaron Sorensen Shadow Pack. So it's very similar to the Joey in a lot of respects. It has the double sternum strap. The nice thing about this is the sternum strap uh, actually move up and down, so you can adjust uh, each of the buckles oh, sure. up and down depending on where you want it on your chest. Yeah. Uh, the the downside is the, the stretchy chest pockets aren't as nice or aren't as large as the Joey, uh, but, but, but it's similar. The nice thing is it does have the bottom pocket. Uh, they do have the thumb holes. They, I don't know if they copy that from Palante. I'm assuming so. Oh, yeah. Palante For is the sure. only company For sure. uh, that I know that, that started that, but it does have that feature on the bottom. The Shadow Pack is 23 liters as opposed to the 28 that the Joey is. So this is actually going down a size. Oh. So. This wow. is, uh, Jeremy, what I'm going to be rocking in the Smoky Mountains for four days. So four days, that and a 23-liter pack. Yeah, it comes in at 16.4 ounces. So it's actually, and that's with a panel. Uh, there, is, there is a plastic panel that comes in there that you can slide out. Of course, I, I get rid of that because it's extra weight. But without the panel, it comes in at 12.5. So despite wow. it being um, a, a little bit smaller, it's slightly heavier than the Palante. So... There's a slight trade-off, but it's still everything that so I need we, it to be. And, of course, I don't know if you see that in there. I got the capture clip. Of course, this is where I put my yep, camera. Yep. So when you're kicking my ass going up that 5,000-foot climb, I'm just going to remind you that your pack weighs half as much as mine. Oh, I'll remind you every uh, every half hour or so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. I'm curious to see your loadout for our bigger trip coming up, you know, in, uh, in October, yeah. or October, November. I'm you curious know, to see your loadout. So, I haven't decided yet. Uh, have, you, have you guys uh, put some thought into that trip yet? I have a little bit. My tent yeah. is in, uh, being shipped as we speak. Ah, ooh, a yeah. tent. Oh. Yep. Excellent. I got my Excellent. tent squared away. This is going to be. This is going to be a. This could be a trip. Do you guys know that I actually have a, had to give the National Park Service our hiking resume to get approved for this? I heard program. about that. I would yeah. actually like to see the process in detail, and I'd like to share it with our respective audiences, what we had to go through. We had to actually tell them that we weren't rookies, and we promised not to die on this trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I embellished quite a bit, actually. I, I, uh, I gave all kinds of details. I, also, <laughs> I was going to say it, and it still got approved. <laughs> it did. Amazing. Hey, hey before, we go, before we go, I want to quickly talk about, since we're talking about backpacks, uh, pack covers versus pack liners mm -hmm. versus stuff sacks. I'm gonna give you my view first, is I have stuff sacks because my backpack is supposed to be water resistant. Now, it was raining in my Boundary Waters trip this last weekend and inside my pack, it was moist. Uh, so I'm glad I had my stuff sacks. Now, I know the down part of having stuff sacks is they take more room. Mm -hmm. So when you have a super small pack like I know you have, Miyagi, stuff sex may be an issue. What do you do? One of two things. So personally, I use, I got this from Z, Z Pack. So this is a Dyneema pack liner. So it's basically mm -hmm. one very large, let me see, one very large stuff sack. Um, very similar to the roll top bags that they have. It's got Velcro on the inside. 
and you roll it down and clip it. So this goes inside of my pack, and I, I literally stuff everything that I want to keep dry inside of there, which includes my quilt, my bottom quilt for my hammock, and any clothes that I have. Pretty much that, that, that's about it. Um, everything else gets stuffed around there. But, uh, I use that in a pinch. Now, prior to that, because these Dyneema is quite expensive, a real cheap way for you guys to uh, get started uh, in that kind of world without going with a million stuff sacks is the hefty uh, trash compactor bags. So you can pick these up at your local hardware store. These things are great. They're a little bit heavier than the Dyneema, um, but the trash compactor bags basically are, are a waterproof option. Uh, stuff everything down in there, twist the top, fold it back down in on itself, and you're good to go. Yep. Yeah, I have a roll of those so I have 49 extra of those if anybody wants them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so my problem is why I don't use a liner is, uh, as you know, with my hammock, uh, the suspension doesn't come off. So if it rains, I typically put my hammock inside my backpack and, you know, the hammock is dry because it's under the rain fly. But the suspension and the straps going around the tree get soaked. So if I put that in my backpack, you know, there's that moisture inside and I want my stuff sack for my down and my coats and my clothes. Hmm. So my, my question is, have you, have you ever tried putting it into the mesh panel in the front of your pack? The, the hammock itself? Yeah. The problem is, is that stuff sack that I have for my hammock isn't waterproof. So if ah. it's still raining outside, the hammock will get wet. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. Your polyester webbing straps you use for your hammock, they hold water like crazy. Mm -hmm. I use Dyneema straps for my hammock, and those don't retain water at all. It, it, it's fairly dry. I use a Nylofume Polycro pack liner. It's basically a very loud, very crinkly, crystal clear sack. I store all my clothes. All my, my top quilts, under quilts, everything in it. Roll it down, and then I throw everything on top of it. Everything Great leg one option. I don't care if it gets wet or not. It's actually window. The, the non. So it, it, if you're familiar with uh, like a window treatment. Uh, yep. Yeah, it's the same stuff, right, Rob? The, the nylon. The insulation, yep, the much, stuff that you put much, on. But, and, but, it, but it's a bag. dryer. You know, but, yeah. it, but it's an actual bag. Right, but it's right. lightweight. Yep. You buy. I bought mine from lightsmith.com. You get three of them for like four bucks or something like that. Um, once you use them a bunch, then the, the noisiness goes away because packing up your, your stuff in the yeah. morning while everyone's sleeping, they're, they're going to hear you. <laughs> so, so a question I have for you is you wrap up the stuff that you want to keep dry and you put that in the bottom of your pack Correct. and then you put the wet things on top of it uh, or the things that could be wet. Yep. And that doesn't cause an issue. It doesn't get in there if, as long all. as you wrap it up real yep. good. Yep. You got you to gotta roll it down like you would a roll top backpack essentially and then uh you can even twist it but using a pack liner you free stuff everything you're not rolling yeah. things you're not stuffing in the small stuff sacks so they're able to fill the bottom of yeah. your pack up all the little corners and nooks and crannies it fills your the bottom of your pack completely and then yeah then i throw everything on top like you know my ditty bags and my food bags and all that kind of stuff goes right on top either of you guys use a pack cover at all i have one no in, yeah i do too Man, I have so, to release it. you know, the problem with a pack cover, a couple problems. The main problem is my back sweats a lot. So that moisture from my back can get into the pack and then everything gets wet. And the pack cover isn't going to fix right, that. Right, yeah, right. But the good part about a pack cover uh, that my buddy Stephen pointed out on our trip this weekend is when it rains, uh, you know, if you don't have a real... Uh, ultra lightweight pack your outside of your pack is going to get wet mm -hmm. and that's going to make it a lot heavier and if you have a pack cover it stays dry and is a little lighter right and i i will say i there on the occasions where i don't bring a chair i don't bring my helinox chair because usually when i go to sleep i'll put my backpack on my chair underneath my tarp but on the occasions i don't do that i'll bring my pack cover i'll put my whole backpack in the pack cover slide it underneath my hammock yeah, it's a good idea. So for keeps it all dry. So for me, I have a, a Z-Pax rain skirt that I, I wear in that butt pocket below me. Yeah. So instead of the the chair that you use, I'll take my 
rain skirt, I unzip it and create a placemat, and that's what I put my stuff on underneath my hammock at night. So there it is. Yep. What's that rain skirt made out of? Dyneema. Is it Dyneema? Okay. Yep. Dyneema. Everything's Dyneema. Yep. It's Dyneema. Dyneema me yep. Because I've got a different kind of rain skirt where that isn't Dyneema, and I would worry about using that and wrecking it. Just it you just make another one. So. Yep. Well, look, Mr. Sewing, make another Mr. one. Mr. Mm -hmm. Seamstress over here. Well, or you have got. Miyagi make yeah, you another exactly. one. Exactly. That's what we got for our pack progressions. This is how we started out. So my advice to you about, about packs is, first of all, don't use the excuse if I don't have a backpack to not go backpacking. You could use any pack. You could use your college book bag if you need to, backpack to go, but at least get out on trail. But if you're trying to figure out what size you need, me personally, I get all the things that I'm going to pack in a backpack and I buy a backpack to fit all my gear. Yep. Versus versus buying a backpack and then make sure all your gear fits. <laughs> Which is don't don't do that. Yeah. My, and my my piece of advice for new backpackers is buy a super cheap backpack, your first one. You're probably going to get one that's way bigger than you need. Uh, and within a year you're probably going to figure out from backpacking what you don't like about that one, and with the experience, you can buy a better backpack. Yep. I tell you what, my you got any advice? My, my buddy Milos, as you guys know, he wears a, a backpack on the front, kind of like a big papoose, and yep. he wears a backpack on the back. And they're both they're they're not even from backpacking companies. I think he's got one from a, a volleyball company or something, and the other one is like a collegiate backpack. And he's been using that stuff for years, and he has absolutely no problems on the trail. In fact, I. Hey, that guy can put on 40 miles a day, no problem. And he's using stuff that he's been given to him, uh, you know, from, from people. So you don't have to have the yep. most expensive gear. I, I guarantee you could go to Walmart tomorrow and outfit yourself and probably just be just fine out on the trail. Yep. So agree. Yep. And, and don't worry about other people judging yeah. you. Who, who gives a rip? Nope. Doesn't matter. You're out there. Do it. <clears throat> All right, man. Thanks for joining us. Yes, appreciate again. it. Best best guest we've ever had so uh yeah so check out miyagi we'll put links to his youtube channel down below uh puts out some great videos especially the ones that we're oh, yeah. in there's been a few of those and uh check out uh good seeing you check out my instagram too if you get a chance uh you know we put a lot of yeah i suppose you want me to put a link to that down below yeah, too yeah. huh yeah it'd be a solid shout i'd, I'd appreciate that <laughs> yeah. you'd think that you've done this uh, video with us three times, so I guess I can. <laughs> so, all right, man, we'll let you go. I'll see you tomorrow. We're going back. We there. are. We'll see you uh, at my house tomorrow night, uh, and I got a warm spot on the couch for you, gentlemen. It's been fun. So, sounds all good. Right. I guess Cheers, I'll see bro. you on the trail. We'll see you on the trail. <laughs> and in other news, Jeremy Lacroix, f's up another podcast. <laughs>